Hi Saints and welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jared. In today's video we have an emergency update. As there was an attack, as I'm sure you all have heard, that took place in Moscow yesterday on 322, which was carried out by ISIS-K. And the reason why we need to cover this event is because it confirms a connection that we talked about in this Purim 2024 video. In addition, it follows another pattern demonstrated in Ezekiel 38 eclipse video. But before we begin, Saints, this was a horrific attack. And we ought to be praying for the peace, God's peace and strength for those families that lost loved ones yesterday. You know, although Russia will come against Israel, as seen through Ezekiel 38, let's remember that we have brothers and sisters in Christ that live in Russia. And when the rapture takes place, they will be coming with us. In fact, that includes all the countries in Ezekiel 38. We have brothers and sisters in Christ in Iran, Turkey. We have brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. And so let's lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ over there. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into our topic to see how this attack in Russia plays a role in end time Bible prophecy. And so as we saw in the Purim 2024 video, right? I'll leave a link to it in the description. But coming to this side, the Purim Eclipse, dates of significance, we specifically called out this conjunction between Venus and Saturn that took place between the 21st and the 23rd, in addition to this other prophecy pattern of Purim plus one day, the 25th and the 26th, and that something significant would happen on one of these two dates, and it would make world news, it'd be in the headlines. Well, saints, our 322 attack met that qualification. Now, to be fair, I genuinely thought that it would only be one of these date patterns, either on the conjunction or one day plus Purim. But because the Russia attack took place on the conjunction, we still need to be watching the Purim plus one day pattern as well. So let us still watch the news headlines for the 25th and the 26th for something significant to take place on one of those two days. Now, let's talk about the timing of this conjunction and the attack. You see, from the Pyramid video, turning to this slide, we discovered that March 22nd was also the 13th of Adar, which was a specific date called out in Esther chapter 3. And the fact that this conjunction was occurring on that specific date exactly was unique. Now, on the timeline, I listed the 21st through the 23rd. But note that it was the 22nd exactly when Venus and Saturn would be in conjunction. The 21st technically was still a conjunction, but it was a little bit further away. Likewise, the 23rd. However, it was the 22nd when Venus and Saturn were closest. And so, moreover, the 21st or 23rd was really more of a buffer from my point of view. And to be fair, saints, I am learning God's celestial signs here in real time. God presses upon my spirit certain conjunctions over others, and this was one of them. And so in this instance, this is where it gets supernatural by design. Saints, this pattern we've already seen before. Okay, check this out. So this conjunction, right, is the 22nd. In fact, let's clean this slide up and just look at the conjunction. And let me ask this question. What date is Purim? Well, it's the 23rd and the 24th. So the pattern is, a conjunction that takes place one day prior to Purim. But as you'll see here in a moment, it's part of a larger pattern that identifies a planetary conjunction that when it's closest and occurs one day prior to any Jewish feast day, Russia gets attacked. In fact, this March 22nd attack is the fourth time it's happened. Here, check this out. You see, in the Planet Parade video, this one right here, the Grand Alignment, out of that video series stemmed this video, the Ezekiel 38 Eclipse. This one goes over Russia. And turn to this slide, out of that Ezekiel 38 video, the October 25th partial solar eclipse went over Russia. It's in the bottom right. However, if you notice, I have Feast of Passover, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Tabernacles, all in blue. Well, to clean up this slide a little bit, make it a little easier to see, and also from that video, was this slide. Because those same exact feasts 
matched to planetary conjunctions one day prior to those three feast days and Russia would get attacked. Isn't that interesting? Here, let's just go through some of these. Okay, so the sinking of the Moskva was on 414, the same date as the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and it also marked the 110th anniversary on that exact day of the sinking of the Titanic. And because it was the 110th anniversary, scratching out the zero, there's an 11 connection here, which is what the Holy Spirit used to demonstrate that this is the start of some sort of pattern. Well, anyways, that's what subsequently would take place. Because on 926, when Venus and Mercury were in conjunction, one day prior to the start of the Feast of Trumpets, the Nord Stream 2 attack. And that pipeline? Mm-hmm. And then again, you had Jupiter and the Moon in conjunction on 10-8, one day prior to the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Crimea Bridge attack took place. And now fast forwarding to March 22nd of this year, we have a conjunction between Venus and Saturn one day prior to the Feast of Purim. And Russia gets attacked. Saints, this is the fourth time that this pattern has played out. And therefore, something big is on the horizon. And it may very well be connected to our March 25th and 26th pattern. Meaning, what will Putin say on one of those days? Will he implicate the U.S. because of its support of Ukraine? After all, and it's still pretty early, but Moscow is blaming Ukraine. As Putin is stating that the gunmen who raided Moscow concert hall tried to escape to Ukraine, Kiev denies involvement. We shall see something, something doesn't, I'll be honest, something doesn't sit right with ISIS attacking Russia. It just doesn't. I don't know if you feel that this is a little odd, but it, there's something not right about this situation. And because it's not that straightforward, there's something bigger at play. And so, moreover, coming back to our Purim Eclipse dates of significance, the tragic attack that took place on the 22nd, marked by a conjunction one day prior to a feast day, will prove to be extremely significant. As a further pushing forward end time events. As we saw in the previous video, highlighting the three Purim eclipses three years in a row, we are in a transition point, saints. The closing out of the Age of Grace as God shifts his focus to the restoration and redemption of Israel. And so with that being said, this is where we're going to end the video. But before we go, if you aren't saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, then let's get you saved right now. And so the gospel of our salvation comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and he was raised on the third day. According to the scriptures, all this was predicted before it even took place. As we see in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5, that Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. And if you believe that Jesus Christ laid his life down for you and paid for your sins, all of them, past, present, and future, that if you believe that, then according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Why? For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Which is why in verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus Christ loves you so much, so much. In fact, I love how 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 in the Amplified Translation tells us that. For God is love. He is the originator of love. And it's an enduring attribute of his nature. He loves you. And he's coming very soon. 
And that is exciting news. And so with all that being said, saints, I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless. And Maranatha, King Jesus.